Oh my gosh, guys, they did a thing that changes everything. Behold, overflow smart splitters. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time, we got a couple new toys. And also, we did a quite a bit of a train expansion, expanding over into the left side of the map here. And we added in a new train station right beside the swamp biome. Which we'll be using a lot in the future, but right now, we just need a little bit of extra sulfur for our weapons project. But funnily enough, most of all the last episode was a bit of a sidetrack. And what I really want to get started on is our main crystal oscillator production. Because crystal oscillators are one of the most important things you need to build in your factory. Not only because you need them for later tech, but also you can use them to make motors, make extra computers and like an assembler, and I'm certain you're gonna need them for like tier 8 whenever it comes out. And so I've been looking into the numbers regarding crystal oscillator production, like how many we should use, etc, etc, and also if we should use the default recipe or the alternate recipe. Now 90% of the time, you're going to want to use an alternate recipe of some sort, except when it comes to crystal oscillators, it's a little weird. Because with the crystal oscillators, you have to use quartz crystals, cable, and reinforced iron plates. However, with the iron wire recipe, you can make cable out of iron, and the iron plates, go figure, are all out of iron as well. And of course, iron is the most abundant resource in the world, so that makes this recipe very, very enticing. But here's the problem. You only make one crystal oscillator per minute. Whereas with the alternate recipe, you make 1.9, so pretty much two. And also, you use 18.75 quartz crystal for two crystal oscillators, while the first one uses 18 quartz crystals for one oscillator. So you're making much better use of your quartz. And then the trouble arises with the other stuff that you need to make the alternate crystal oscillator, which is rubber and AI limiters. Now rubber, mmm, that's gonna be a bit of a thing. You're gonna need about as much rubber, as in oil, as you would at quartz. So those are pretty rare resources. Not particularly rare, but important resources. And then also you have AI limiters to make. And AI limiters take quick wire. Another super rare resource. And that's kind of the dilemma with this. Do you use the super efficient recipe that uses the other, like, quote-unquote rare resources or do you just use this recipe that uses a lot more quartz but then it just uses iron so what I ended up doing was the entirety of the math calculations for the whole production chain for both the normal recipe and the alternate recipe so based on a scenario where we use 3360 raw quartz we need an extra 4800 iron for this and about 2000 copper or if we use the iron wire to make cable, it'd be about 8,000 iron total. But the alternate's pretty extreme too, because with the same amount of raw quartz, we'd use around 2,800 oil per minute, 900 keytrium, and about 4,800 copper. So yeah, these guys are a bit of a feisty one. Quite the feisty one indeed. Using almost half the oil in the entire world is a bit of an ask. <laughs> However, I was considering other production chains, like say with computers, right? We have an alternate recipe that allows us to make crystal computers. So we can use crystal oscillators and circuit boards to make computers. So that's really good. However, later on we're gonna have to use plastic to make circuit boards for the computers as well. So realistically, we'll be using about 80% of the oil in the entire world here, making our crystal oscillators and computers. Which is pretty spooky, considering I don't know what's in tier 7, like how the Alclad sheets go. And also for turbo motors as well, that might be a, a time and a half. Because I think turbo motors and, what are they, the radio control units use an insane amount of rubber and plastic as well. So that's kind of how I've been thinking about this project. Like, those are the, vari the main variables. And considering them, I still think we're going to use the alternate crystal oscillator recipe. It's gonna use an insane amount of oil, but considering that we're only gonna be using about 80% of the oil on the map, 
and there's the diluted fuel recipe, which allows us to effectively double our oil, I thought we may as well just YOLO things and try it out. So, now we have our first big goal, now we have to do a little bit of inventory here. See what we've already gathered and see how much more we're gonna have to scoop up. So I already know we are grabbing at least, I think this is 480 quartz crystals here. How many? One 480 line? Is this only one? Is it split up? I think it's two. Yeah, no, they're not 480. They're quartz nodes from way up here. There's two of them and they're normal nodes. So we have two 300 lines. So that's a pretty good start. And then we're also gathering quartz from way, 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 way over here. So out at our outpost here, we have two pure quartz nodes we're gathering from. And I've actually worked on this station a bit on stream. Uh-oh. Stop. Stop. Let me go down. Okay. And I'll show you that a little bit more in half a second. Oh. Hello, bouncy ball. Looks like we were drawn towards you, my friend. Like I was saying, I was doing a bit of work here on the live streams, and I set up some refineries to ore double the quartz while we're here, before bringing it back to base. Because we're bringing the water back to base already, then we're bringing the raw quartz back to base, and we're gonna ore double it anyway, so I was like, well, this seems ridiculous. Why don't we just grab a little bit of extra water here, get the quartz redirected to these refineries, and ore double it here. Like, it makes a lot more sense. So yeah, tons of refineries here, and we're converting 960 raw quartz per minute into quartz crystals. So not bad. But not bad isn't actually good. <laughs> so total then, we have 1,560 raw quartz entering our base, and that's been like dealt with and accounted for. And for my calculations, we need 3,360 raw quartz. So we don't even have half the quartz we need yet. But you see, now everything circles back to last time, because when we're working on the trains, you may have noticed that there's another line going up over here. And the reason why there's a line going up over here is because there are six normal quartz nodes. Three over there, and then another three over here. Meaning this is all the rest of the quartz we need to make our crystal oscillator project. And then the rest of the quartz in the world will be used for alclad sheets, silica, and all the other later projects. So now then, the big plan is to get a train line that breaks off of this main line, parks somewhere around here, and gathers up all of this quartz to be brought back to base. There's no, like, simple water source near us, so we're gonna have to refine it and double it back at home. But technically, I guess we could put, like, some water extractors in the swamp, but brother, I can't be bothered. Place is too messy, and the system would look too garbage. I couldn't handle it. Ooh, and this is a big project, but good thing here. I think we have the perfect line for a massive train station right down this way. That is, like, ideal. Because then, the train station can face in this direction, and the outward uh, train line can go around here, can come up here, and then uh, go back to base. All right, so a good plan is being made. Now to make it a reality. Ooh, number one though, let's set up a new train station and get our project train over here so we don't have to go back and forth like a million times. Oh man, have I mentioned that this is like one of the most useful projects we've ever done? Because this has helped me out so much, it's unbelievable. But now, let us grab all of the concrete and rock and roll. Okay, so super quick, just following the plan we'd already discussed. The train station is now in. The items are all hooked up and everything is all hunky-dory. So, that is 369 times 2 is 1,800 extra quartz per minute going back to base. And also, there's a little bit of iron here too, so I was like, yo, let's just scoop that up at the same time. Why not? But yeah, pretty straightforward project as of right now. It definitely needs a little bit more, uh, decor to make it more, uh, visually acceptable. But I'll do stuff like that on the live streams. Right now and for today, I just wanted this up and running. So we could start on the next phase of the project. But also, guys, I'm gonna need another train station name here for this quartz train. So let me know any of your suggestions in the comments below. 
Okay, well, cool, cool, cool. We got all this quartz back at base. Excellent, right? Wrong. Because now we need to turn the raw quartz into quartz crystals. Meaning this party is just getting started, brother. Because if we have 1,800 extra raw quartz, that means to refine it all, we need to do 1,800 divided by 67.5, and that equals 26.6 repeating, i.e. we need 27 refineries to actually process all the quartz we're bringing in now. Oh, and then water. Well, 26.66 times 37.5 equals 999.75 cubic meters of water. Oh boy, it's party time. And if we're refining quartz crystals, then we're gonna need a ton of space for actually doing that. And I've gone ahead and I've done a decent chunk of bees planting here. So we are processing up to this floor where we're gonna be making all of our plastic. And I've kind of determined that we're gonna need the first floor, the second floor, and even a third floor, all just for plastic and rubber and oil processing. So I've kind of cordoned off this piece just for that stuff. Meaning that the quartz refining would have to be on the next available floors, which are right here. Which is pretty much the transition point between the first phase of our base and the second phase of our base. And right off the bat, I'm really just considering to pack water to bring up here. I think that will be like the easiest method. Like this is, this is insane at this point. Like we, <laughs> yeah, there's no way we're piping it. Or, you know, this is probably the better idea. And that's if we just had a train station for refining. So like say over there where we're packaging some water, we just had a train station in like 50,000 refineries. So we'd send all the raw ore to that train station, it'd be processed and then taken away. Or I guess actually doing that over in the beach over by the oil over there would be even better. Or, <laughs> this is a funny idea I kept getting from you guys in the comments. We bring a train full of water to the top of our base. Which is, in my opinion, the most ridiculous thing. Could you imagine how a train track would look if we did that? It'd be like a train tornado going all the way up here. And no, that's not what we're doing. We're, we'll be packaging stuff before that. And really, the best idea is like a train station that goes to a refinery. But I don't want to make like the entire ocean over there refineries. I'd rather have them in our base and making our base even taller. But for you guys, if you want to do like an efficient refinery setup, I'd highly recommend that. But for now, it looks like we're going to be packing up some water. Good thing is though, that we actually already have all the extra water in base. A long while ago here now, I set up a bunch of water extractors over there. We put it all into the pipes, brought it all back to base, and now we have, I think, 1200 water just sitting down there. Some of it we're using for some refining already. But most of it is still just sitting here. Just over here. Cool, yep, 1200 water per minute. Great. Now we just have to pack it up and send it to the top of our base. But luckily, we're right beside the train station. Number one. And number two, look at that. We have all the free space we need right here. So we'll set up all of the packing refineries here. And then we will send up the packaged water along with the quartz, up to where it needs to be. And then we're all good. Oh man, and we're booping around all over the place today. That's a sign of progress. Oh boy. But yep, water packed, moving, grooving. You know, it's crazy to me that we need an entire refinery to pack up water. It's like, dude, I can go to my sink with a glass and I can fill that with water. Why do you need this like three story tall building in order to fill a water jug? It's ridiculous, it's insane, but at least it's working and moving and grooving. So yep, we had the extra water just sitting over here. We had about 1200 per minute. So all that stuff getting packed up together, going up, and then the empty casters are coming down. And the whole system just kind of loops through, moving the water from A to B. Oh, but wait, Mr. Kibbs, Mr. Kibbs, what do you mean the water's going all the way up? and then having the empty packages come down. That doesn't make sense. How are you getting everything up there, Kibitz? You're doing all the water packaging down there, and then all the water is being unpackaged up there. How you do? Well, isn't it obvious? Through the power of editing, anything is possible. Okay, but seriously, uh, I redesigned the bees considerably during some uh, Twitch live streams, and now, we have giant item spines on the back of the base. So from the legs of the foundation of the base, 
we have these massive items towers just moving everything up a million quadrillion floors. And these things are like huge. Like it's hard to do them justice, but like, <laughs> these are massive. Each one is bringing 18 lines up the base. So all the train stations, all the items from them will be going up these bad boys all the way up to wherever they have to be. Even from the phase one part of the base to the phase two part of the base. And we're gonna be building these on every one of the legs down here. So we have two right now, and then we'll have three, four, five, six, and that's gonna be it. We're not gonna have them on the corners. So yeah, these guys will be hidden behind the beast, dealing with most of the logistics work. And most things were just simply moving on up. Then as I mentioned with the water, we have to bring the filled containers up and then bring the empty containers all the way back down. But it's all right because we just stuffed the systems with like an obscene amount of canisters and it all works out fine. In fact, things worked out better than fine because in between the clips here, there was an update to the game. A pretty big one too. Number one, they changed refineries now. So instead, when you're unpacking water, the recipe has changed. So instead of unpacking 60 per minute, you unpack 120 water per minute. And why is that really significant? Well, that means you can pack more water onto your belts, like say you could bring 780 on a Mark V belt up and unpack it significantly faster and easier. And it requires way less refineries to actually unpack stuff, which is fantastic. So I have here 20 unpacking refineries. And now instead of just unpacking 1,200 water per minute, you can unpack 2,400 fluids per minute. So we finally have some extra capacity up here, making our future lives much easier. But I'll be honest, the only reason I did this in the first place is because I built all these refineries before I noticed the new update. <laughs> And trust me, if I had noticed they had been buffed, I super would not have built this many. But hey, we're all good now. Ooh. But on to the bigger change, and the far more important change. But programmable splitters and smart splitters have been buffed, and they have a whole new feature. Do we have an AI limiter? Nope. All right, one moment, please. Down into the jelly pits. I made this like 50 years ago, but I don't think I ever really show it on videos. This is usually how I get down if I don't have the jetpack on me. Oop. There we go. And this gets us right in front of our hub here. And now, if we can grab ourselves, Mr. Limiter, we can check out the new smart splitter thing, which allows us to overflow. Wow! What does that mean, Gibbets? Well, number one, it means that smart splitter setups like this one are hyper valuable now. Like they're super, super simple. Because what the overflow does is ignore this left output, but you can have your right output uh, signal to something. And then once the right has to overflow as in no items can go that way, everything just goes through the center. So yeah, I guess uh, this would be a better example. But let's say that we would want pretty much any undefined going to the right. All right. So pretty much all the items through here are gonna go into this bin. Once this bin fills up, and this line fills up though, all the items back up on the belt, back to the smart splitter, and things will start to overflow to... Space, time, no, to the left. And this has like drastic implications, especially when we wanna start building our manufacturing setups, which is like, woo! Extremely soon. Ooh, it's gonna be a good time. A very good time. So we will definitely be using these a lot more in the future, specifically when we actually start to manufacture our crystal oscillators. But for now, that's where we're gonna leave it for today because we have a lot more processing to do. Because aside from the water, we're also bringing all that quartz up the item spine, meaning it is time to uh, refine it. And not only will we refine the quartz, we'll be refining a lot more on this floor. Now that we have all the water that's able to be unpacked here, <laughs> we could do a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Let's just stick with what we got though. So we have to actually break this down in a bit of a weird way. So we know that we need 27 refineries to refine everything here. However, all of the lines have 300 quartz per minute coming on them, so it'd be far easier if we could just set each line down its own line of refineries. So like 300 divided by 
and that kind of equals 4.4 .4 repeating. But if we set this to about 88%, that means we'll actually use about 60 point something raw quartz per minute per refinery. And it actually has to start processing before we can see the change. I, <clears throat> that's one last thing we need as an update. When you change the clock speed, it changes the inputs as well. That would be the best. Anyway though, trust me that these numbers work out. I think we've actually done this before as well. But we'll just set up systems of five and get everything processed. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look at all that spice. That's about 1,500 quartz crystals worth of processing right there, brother. And we got a pretty cool system going on here too. So the whole thing needs 1,800 quartz crystals, right? But also it needed the 900, or no, pretty much 1,000 water per minute. So I've kind of done something that might work, might not, I don't know. We're gonna find out when we turn it on. But pretty much I broke up all of the 300 lines. They go into each system of five, then split in two. So 150 to five machines, and then another 150 to the other five machines. And that kind of works for every single system of five. But then we brought up that extra 300 line of water. It kind of scoots on through. And then it kind of like bypasses everything and kind of fills up whatever else needs to be filled. So like the extra little bits of water that need to be in each system. And I'm hoping this kind of works. We might have to move the junctions to be in front of this other junction and do some other like finicky things. And like now that I look over it, I'm like 99% sure that's what's gonna have to happen. This is already a 300 line coming in, brother. So we can't fill it further than that, obviously. So, oof, how are we gonna change this then? We're gonna have to have connections like here. So we'll have one here, have one here. And then we're gonna have to have a line of pipes going across up top here. So doot, 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 doot. This line will then come across to there. We will merge this into the 150 lines, and that's how this system's gonna have to work. Now let's see this thing actually rocking and rolling here, brother. So a uh, power on. Everything starts flooding out. Very good, very good. All these guys are set. We can actually see the numbers. So it's about 59.4, almost 60. Do we have to turn this to 89%? Okay, so it's 89% we should change that to. And now we're making 46.7 pure quartz crystals per minute. So 46.7 times 30 refineries equals 1,401 quartz crystals per minute. Right on. And according to my calculations, everything should actually just work. Except for you. Why, my friend? I thought we were having a good time. Ah, yes. <laughs> it should work if it's connected. Easy peasy. Now we can get the cool overview shot. Whoop. Beautiful. Oh my god, the other side isn't done too. <laughs> no. Okay, now we get the beautiful overview shot. Great, cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh man, oh man. We went through the whole process of putting down miners to actually refining all the quartz all in one day. And we got the item spines working and all the water situated. Well, that was only step one. But next up, there's rubber, and I can just tell you that's gonna be a whole meme on its own. We're not even gonna dare look at it. But then also the AI limiters. And what do we need for the limiter, guys, again? Pretty sure we needed copper and the other stuff. You guys know. The quick wire. Oh boy. 100 per minute. And 25 copper sheets per minute. Neat. Well, according to my calculations, we are going to need diddly diddly do. <laughs> oh, very cool. We're gonna need about 900 keterium and about 4,800 copper for this. All right, well, one step at a time here. Let's check our keterium production because we already do have some, so we should be okay. 12 parts per minute, so we're getting 12 ingots per minute. That's good. And each of these refineries is taking 24 keterium ore per minute. So that's 24, and how many refineries are here? There's 20. So 24 times 20 equals 480, right? 
Yes, it does. All right, good. That's over half the Caterium we need right there, brother. Excellent. And lucky us here. Well, not lucky. Of course, past keep its plan for things. But we have a whole nother refinery set up, and guess what it's gonna be doing, brother? Making even more Caterium. We just have to get the ore. Though, I'm 99% sure we have two Caterium ores. This one is a pure node, and then I think there is a normal node, like way off in the hills we grabbed? Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy, way over there, is bringing the Caterium. Hey, a slug! <laughs> that, okay, that is a normal node, bringing all the Caterium down, doodly 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 into the base. So it should be on this floor, in fact. Yeah, let's take a quick gander over this way. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is where all of the items from the left side of the uh, desert are coming in from. So some of our quartz is coming in here, and then our Caterium is around here too. There's the quartz, there's some Caterium, hello. And where do you go, my friend? What did past kibitz end up doing with you, brother? You go over this way, and to there. Well done, past kibitz. Why? Why did I put it there? Oh, I was probably gonna connect it up to those refineries. Oh, I see what you're doing, past kibs. Almost a good plan. Until it wasn't. Because actually, we need you to come over this way, sir. Then go up into this random window, which goes over these pipes. And then where do we have to go? Well, over there. What have I done? Oh no, what have I done? Oh, we have to get the Caterium to here? Brother. Uh, okay, that's not like the worst thing in the world. <gasps> oh, wait, that's the output. Where's the input? Oh, past kibs, please don't do this to yourself. What have you done? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely 10 out of 10 job. The input's actually right back here. Neat, on the other side of the factory. What a perfect position. All right, but present cubes manages to pull through. We just had to make it horrifically convoluted, but it works, <laughs> thankfully. All right, and no, 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 why have you do the wrong boo? Did I actually, I, I actually can't believe I did this. Those are the water pipes? and I built a wall in front of the water pipes. Past kibs, you know what? If I could <laughs> I'm gonna give you a stern word. A stern word if we ever get time travel, man. Please tell me we have extra water hooked up back here already. I think I was going to, and I left it as a problem for future kibs. That's why these are here. It's already set up. It's already set up. I just didn't finish it. But why? I didn't even know we have extra water downstairs. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're not getting the Caterium done today. It's pretty much ready. Uh, I will do that some other time when I am more sane. So let's check on the copper then. We need 4,800 of that. And you know it sounds bad, like getting 4,800 copper, but I'm pretty sure we have a good chunk of it already. Let's check the lines here. We have one line. That tells me absolutely nothing, actually. We have to check the nodes. Okay, and we have one normal copper node, so that's 300. And then we have a uh, impure node that's used just for our basic processing in the base. Very awesome. So we don't even count that. And then you are a pure node, right? Please be a pure node. Okay, that's another 300. Oh, but then this is a pure one, right? 100% has to be not a pure one, and just another 300. Cool. And then the fourth time's the charm, right? Wrong. Okay, another normal node. So we have four normal nodes now hooked up. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Like we scan for copper. There's what's behind us. Go away. And I'm pretty sure we checked the other ones we already seen. Yes, yeah, we checked you, we checked you. Oh my god. So, so far in our playthrough, we have a fourth of the copper ore we need. That's bad. <laughs> well, we do have train stations set up, like, out the wazoo. 
So I think we could get the ore back to base. I don't I don't imagine that'll be a huge problem. Then let's check our capacity here. How many smelters do we have built? Well, there's I think 10 per system here. 10 times 4, so there's 40 smelters here. No, 80. Yeah, 80 smelters here. That's pretty good. So 80, 160. And then I think we have another 160 set over this way. Is it belted? Oh yeah, cool. So that's 240. And this one isn't belted yet, so I have to belt this one through. But yeah, that's 320 smelters. And is that enough to deal with the copper? So 4,800 divided by 30 equals... Uh, I'm scared. Oh, woo, ho, ho, ho. Ooh, that is spooky. It equals 160. So half of this room, like all these smelters and all of these smelters, will all be for smelting copper. And all that copper will be for one mega project. Okay, and finally, oil for rubber. So according to my notes, we needed about 2,800 oil. That's crude oil. How much do we have in base? It's not a lot. Let me guess, 900? <laughs> 900. So we need 1,900 crude oil back to base too. Ooh, I'm considering using our turbo fuel power supply. Mm. Where else would we get oil then? There's only two more places on the map where we can get it, or three more. There's a little bit like right here. There's a chunk of oil like right down here. And then most of the oil on the map is down over here on the Gold Coast area. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do there. So yeah, we got like a lot of variables to deal with. But at least with the Caterium and the Copper, we know what to do. And I'll just hook up the rest of this Caterium stuff, like off camera probably. Like the water pipes, they're gonna be a chore, but not the end of the world. And then as I'm belting together the rest of these smelters, I'll consider what we do for our next course of action. For now though, that's gonna be all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye <laughs>